Hey everybody, it's Sunday, it's story time, and I have a special guest for you. I'm going to show you a tomato frog. Tomato frogs get their name because they're brightly colored and literally look like tomatoes sitting down in the dirt. Now, these are super, super cool frogs that come from Madagascar, which is this island over here off the coast of Africa. Pretty handy to have the map behind me. I'm gonna get my hands wet with some special water because amphibians have semi-permeable skin. That means they can absorb things through their skin. So anything I may have washed my hands with today or chemicals I may have gotten on me, they can actually absorb through me. So I'm gonna spray my hands down, get them a little wet, and I can go ahead and pick him up. So I know it's a him because of the colorization. Now I say tomato frogs are brightly colored, but males tend to be more orange and brown in color, whereas females get bright red and like fluorescent orange. So that's a way that we tell the difference between them. They also have this really cool black stripe that runs down the sides of their uh, face. And what they like to do is burrow down into soil and they're what we call a sit and wait predator. So he's gonna sit there with his grumpy looking face and he's gonna wait for insects to walk by. And he's gonna go ahead and flick his tongue out really hard and grab them and he doesn't have teeth. He actually has like these folds on the top of his mouth to help him hold on to the food and then crunch it down. So they're not known for being very active, but they are very, very cool to look at and they can basically deter predators, that means scare them away, by their color. And it's because they have these bright colors on them and because they can kind of blow themselves up full of air and make themselves look bigger, they become more intimidating looking to a predator. So they can either burrow down in the soil and hide them or if the predator saw them, they can just make themselves look really, really big. I like uh, them because of their big, googly-looking eyes and also because of their grumpy-looking face. To me, they, they always look grumpy. Usually frogs have smiles on their faces and toads usually have grumpy-looking faces, but the tomato frog is kind of the in-between. So they're a very, very cool frog, and because I think he's grumpy-looking, we're going to read Grumpy Monkey because I think these guys look the same, don't you? Grumpy face, grumpy face, grumpy face. So, here is Grumpy Monkey by Suzanne Lang. And we'll start off with just a funny picture. So, here we go. One wonderful day, Jim Panzi woke to discover that nothing was right. The sun was too bright, the sky was too blue, and the bananas were too sweet. Jim was confused. What's going on? Maybe you're grumpy, suggested Norman from next door. Not grumpy, Jim insisted. On his walk, he met Marabou. Jim's grumpy, Norman told Marabou. Why are you grumpy, Jim, asked Marabou. It's such a wonderful day. Grumpy? Me? I'm not grumpy, said Jim. But look how you're standing, Marabou said. It's true, said Norman. You're all hunched. So Jim loosened up. Then he ran into Lemur. Jim's grumpy, Norman told Lemur. Why are you grumpy, Jim, asked Lemur. It's such a wonderful day. Grumpy? Me? I'm not grumpy, said Jim. Your eyeballs look grumpy, said Lemur. It's true, said Norman. They're all bunched up. So Jim raised his brow. Then he tripped over Snake. Oh no, said Norman. That's the last thing you need to do when you're feeling so grumpy. Grumpy? Me? I'm not grumpy, said Jim. Then why that frown, said Snake. I think it's because he tripped over you, Norman whispered to Snake. So Jim put on a smile. Finally, Jim looked happy, but he didn't feel happy inside. Everyone wanted Jim to enjoy this wonderful day. You should sing with us, said the birds. Jim didn't feel like singing. You should swing with us, said the monkeys. 
gym didn't feel like swinging. You should roll with us, said the zebras. Jim didn't feel like rolling. You should stroll with us, said the peacocks. Jim didn't feel like strolling. You should lie in the grass. You should stop your feet. You should take a bath and make a splash. You should hug someone. You should laugh. You should take a nap. You should eat old meat or some honey. You should jump up and down. You should sit in the sun. You should dance. But Jim didn't feel like doing any of that. Why are you grumpy, Jim? asked the others. It's such a wonderful day. I'm not grumpy, shouted Jim as he beat his chest. And he stormed off. Jim felt sorry. A little sorry for shouting at everyone, but mostly sorry for himself. I guess I am grumpy, Jim sighed, and just sat, and just as he was starting to feel really sad, he came upon Norman. Norman was slumped, his eyebrows were bunched up, and he was frowning. What's the matter? Are you grumpy? asked Jim. No, I danced with porcupines, said Norman. Are you okay, asked Jim. It hurts, but I'll probably feel better soon enough, said Norman. Are you still grumpy? Yes, said Jim, but I'll probably feel better soon enough too. For now, I need to be grumpy. It's a wonderful day to be grumpy, said Norman. Jim agreed. And he already felt a little bit better. So this is a great story telling us about how it's okay to feel grumpy sometimes. It's okay to be in bad moods. You're always gonna have people tell you you should smile more, you should dance, you should be happy, but sometimes you just need to be grumpy. Sometimes you just want to frown, sometimes you just don't feel like doing stuff, and that's completely okay. You don't have to always be happy and always be 100%. We're different every day and our feelings are different. So Grumpy Monkey told us that that's okay. And I think our little froggy friend here thinks the same thing. Because even though he looks like he's a little grumpy, maybe he's not. Maybe it's just the way he is. So, hope you enjoyed learning about tomato frogs. And I hope you enjoyed Grumpy Monkey by Suzanne Lang. So, have a good night.